Uh, ladies, gentlemen, friends all, could you take your seats, please? Une fois de plus, quelques mots. Once again, a few words in French. Thank you for remaining with us for a second day during the conference. The parliamentary secretary, that it's basically an English-speaking conference, so we're operating mostly in English, and she's agreed to operate in that spirit uh, with us. Um, we're delighted she's been able to join us uh, today. Uh, we were mentioning to her in briefing her on the conference just now how rich the partnership with the Syngenta Foundation has been for us. Marco, thank you very much. And the parliamentary secretary is looking forward to chatting with you after this. Um, um, I'm just going to say a few words uh, of welcome. First, about the link between CEDA and IDRC. I alluded to it in passing yesterday in my remarks. Um, but uh, the presence of Lois Brown amongst us gives me an opportunity to say a bit more. First of all, although IDRC was uh, created to support policy-relevant research in uh, developing regions, CEDA itself has been very research-oriented over the decades and, and believes in the importance uh, of it and often partners with IDRC uh, because some efforts we engage in are simply too big for either us or CEDA, and we enjoy the, uh, the, the learning from each other uh, that goes on. Um, for example, we have both uh, supported the CG system and individual uh, constituents of uh, the consultative group on international agricultural research uh, in the past. Uh, and that has been important in building in Canada a very strong constituency for CGI AR. Um, through CEDA and IDRC over the last 40 years, um, we've helped uh, by conjoining our efforts to spread uh, the Green Revolution, for example, in India through the efforts of Indians, providing the uh, uh, support they needed. They, in turn, uh, developed uh, pest-resistant cassava, higher-yielding bean crops, uh, flood-resistant rice, and that's just naming a few of the achievements uh, Indians um, developed for themselves. Uh, and, of course, as a result of that, millions of lives have been improved and some have been saved. Um, earlier uh, this month, we had uh, in Ottawa uh, Carlos Perez del Castillo, uh, the consultative group's uh, chair, uh, who met with parliamentarians while here. I was mentioning to Lois we had an excellent uh, session on what we call here Parliament Hill. Uh, and so many Canadian parliamentarians are interested in agriculture. And there are several reasons for it, but one of it's very basic. So many parliamentary constituencies in Canada are either rural or semi-rural. So, so many uh, politicians in Canada have uh, farming constituents and other rural constituents. So um, agriculture is a big topic on Parliament Hill. Uh, Another example of IDRC and uh, CEDA working together is the Canadian International Food Security Research Fund, which was launched several years ago, a partnership of CEDA and IDRC into which we both uh, put money, which we believe is being successful enough that uh, happily uh, the Prime Minister announced quite recently um, an extension of the initiative and a doubling of its resources. We started with about $62 million between the two institutions, of which I should mention the lion's share was from CEDA. Um, and uh, now we're going into a second phase funded at about the same level. Um, we um, uh, we 
work closely in, in Canada with CEDA in bringing the agricultural challenges of much of the rest of the world, specifically uh, the developing world, to uh, the political community in Ottawa, and that's tremendously uh, important in uh, our country. Um, and Lois Brown has been tremendously active in the Parliamentary Committee on Foreign Affairs and International Development. And of interest to this conference, she's had from the outset a very, very strong focus on public-private partnerships. That's not a coincidence. She's a businesswoman in her background. She has also worked extensively in the NGO and volunteer uh, worlds. Uh, she is a professional of the health community, by the way, before um, uh, joining Parliament, and this is her second term in Parliament. So she has all of the personal background to make a major contribution in the Parliamentary Committee on this subject. Rather than banging on, uh, Lois, I thought I'd just refer to something that I heard you refer to not so long ago in public. Uh, uh, Ms. Brown's uh, son-in-law, Kofi, originally from Kumasi in Ghana, just completed his doctorate in electrical engineering. And uh, Lois mentioned what a natural entrepreneur he is and uh, how he plans to exercise his entrepreneurial um, spirits and skills uh, back in uh, Ghana by opening a company there which will help people produce energy and provide jobs and other opportunities to his country of origin. So I thought the audience would be interested in knowing that about your uh, extended uh, family, Lois. We're tremendously honored to have you here at IDRC. And now the podium is yours. Over to you. find a spot for that water. Thank you very much, David. And yes, indeed, I am very, very proud of my son-in-law. He is a remarkable young man. I tell him the brightest thing he did was to choose me to be his mother-in-law, but <laughs> I, I think he got a pretty good catch in my daughter. So uh, we're delighted that he's part of our family. And so much so that uh, for three weeks before the wedding, um, when I realized that we were going to be having so much company from overseas, we actually ended up with 14 people living in our house for three weeks before the wedding. If any of you has had a family wedding, you will understand the... Uh, the tremendous amount of, of activity on wedding day, the number of people who have to get through showers and all of those things, but we managed to do so and had a remarkable, remarkable time in the process. So I am thrilled to have Ghanaian family and uh, we Skype on a regular basis. <laughs> But it is my pleasure to be here this afternoon. I'm here on behalf of Minister Oda, the Minister of International Cooperation. She is today returning from Japan with our Prime Minister, so sends her regrets that she's not able to be with you. And I'd like to begin by thanking IDRC and the Syngenta Foundation for co-hosting this very important and timely conference. So thank you to David and uh, thank you to Marco. And um, I understand Martin Taylor was here as well. Honored guests. Now, my mother always told me that uh, public speaking was a, an honor. And she said that what you should do is tell people what you're going to say. You should say what you're going to say, and then you should sit down. <laughs> and I think that's very good advice to take because I know that I'm the only thing between you and lunch. <laughs> Although my dad left the farm for university and never really went back to spend much time there, I come from generations of farmers. And from spending many, many summers on the family farm, I know that agriculture is business. And all governments recognize that they have a role to play in helping farmers be successful. Successful first in increasing their yields and successful in helping to feed the hungry. When it comes to agricultural development and sustainable food security, 
We know that public-private partnerships will be an increasingly vital tool going forward. So I would like to congratulate the IDRC and Syngenta for drawing attention to this issue and for attracting more than 100 business leaders, government representatives and scientists to share their best ideas and practices in this area. And I'm sorry that I won't be able to participate in any of the panels, but I've heard from David already that you have had some very successful discussions and that they have been very, very productive. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Global Food Challenge, CEDA's work in this area, and the government's efforts to collaborate with the private sector to make our response more effective. First of all, the Global Food Security Challenge. On October the 31st of 2011, we welcomed the seven billionth person into this world. This is a significant milestone for the Earth's population, which continues to grow at a staggering pace. World population is projected to be hit 10 billion by the turn of the century, with nearly all of that growth occurring in developing countries. Currently, out of 7 billion people, close to 900 million do not have enough to eat. Rising food prices in 2008 and again in 2011 have threatened to deepen the global food crisis. Price spikes in food in early 2011 have been blamed for pushing an additional 44 million people into poverty. Our food security challenge is exacerbated by the growing scarcity of decent land and adequate water, climate change, and poor agricultural infrastructure. We cannot turn a blind eye to these issues. Studies show that very few countries achieve lasting economic growth without first developing agriculture. Moreover, based Growth based on agriculture is four times more effective in reducing poverty than growth in other sectors. So we need to help farmers access and apply research and knowledge in order to continue to support agricultural sustainable development and to safeguard all the development gains that have been made. What then has been CETA's response? Food security, as you know, is a very complex problem and it requires innovative solutions. Through Canada's leadership on global policy and programming for food security, CEDA has been working to turn this situation around. In 2009, Canada helped shape the G8 Lagila Food Security Initiative, where G8 member countries, along with other major donors and development partners, came together and they committed $20 billion to advancing our commitments towards sustainable agricultural development. Later that year, Minister Oda announced CETA's food security strategy, which highlights sustainable agricultural development as one of its three key paths to address extreme hunger and undernourishment. Addressing food security means looking at the entire value chain, from the field to the table. And I would like to highlight three key areas on which CETA focuses its food security strategy. Women, research and innovation, and nutrition. CETA's work in agriculture focuses on smallholder farmers, particularly women. And I note the discussion of this in the President's message in the latest IDRC annual report. It is important to remember that 500 million smallholder farms feed more than 2 billion people, one-third of humanity. Because of their far-reaching impact, food security will only be realized when smallholder farmers are empowered to access crucial production resources such as new technologies, training, extension services, finance and markets. In many developing countries, especially in Africa and in Asia, the majority of these farmers are women. On a recent visit that I had to South Sudan, in January actually, the delegation with whom I traveled visited several smallholder farms where we met the women who farm the land to feed their families. Women are quite literally the engine of the rural economy and guardians of family nutrition especially in the poorest communities. 
Closing the gender gap in agricultural out inputs alone could lift 100 to 150 million people out of hunger. Because women are the linchpin of the smallholder agriculture, they must be at the centre of any food security strategy. Canada has a lot of success working with smallholder farmers. Let me give you a few examples. CETA's work with the International Fund for Agricultural Development, one of our key food security partners, is empowering more than 340 million smallholder farmers, mostly women, to improve their business practices, adapt to climate change, rehabilitate their farmlands, access finance, and develop their markets. CETA also supports the Pan-African Bean Research Alliance, which has helped more than 4 million households, half of them women-headed, gain access to improved seeds. I was reading online some of their initiatives working in 18 countries. In Vietnam, CETA has enabled 27,000 women to access credit to finance, to finance small livestock production. This alone contributed significantly to reducing poverty levels in 137 communities from 46% to 15%. CETA is also investing in research and innovation. We are focusing on practical, tangible solutions that farmers can use and apply in their everyday work. Perhaps at another time, when lunch isn't waiting, I could share some stories of my visits to Ethiopia, to Zambia, to Burkina Faso, where I have seen firsthand smallholder farms where CETA contributions are helping to build sturdier herds of cattle and introduce new agricultural methods and more hearty crops. It was quite an education for me. In 2009, as part of Canada's food security strategy, CETA and the IDRC launched the five-year Canadian International Food Security Research Fund. Canadian and southern partners across 17 different countries in Africa, South Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean have begun to work together and have drawn farmers into the loop to ensure that the research meets their needs. Our experience has shown that when agricultural research is driven by the demands of farmers, it can provide long-term solutions for food security. An early result of the fund is a project to enhance food security for people in rural India through production and processing of regional staple food grains. A centrifugal mill has been designed and tested to substantially increase processing efficiency to over 90%. It requires a minimum of training to operate, is made of locally available materials, and it provides a safer and cleaner working environment. The potential for commercialization of this mill and the expanded market opportunities for the women working in these mills could be an exciting new area for further partnerships and development, one that will lead to more food for the hungry. And I had the opportunity in Ethiopia to see, or sorry, in South Sudan, to see a mill that has been designed for making peanut butter, which is used out in the very most remote areas of South Sudan, but giving the opportunity to women who are farming for peanuts, ground nuts they call them, the opportunity to create nutritious food for their children at a very, very reasonable cost. And again, this mill is one that is going to be able to be available to many of the women in South Sudan to create their own business. But getting food on the table is only one part of the job. Getting better, more nutritious food on the table also has to be part of the approach. Currently, millions of the world's most vulnerable people do not get enough iron, iodine, vitamin A, folic acid, and zinc in their diets, leading to unnecessary illness, blindness, mental disorders, and death. That's why CETA is working with the Global Partnership for Scaling Up Nutrition to help bring global and national attention to a largely forgotten aspect of food security, nutrition. CETA has recognized the need to bring in new players to make a difference in this area, such as the private sector, and to support public-private partnerships. 
And again, just a comment about something I saw in Bangladesh, where I know that people are taking three and four crops of rice off the same property every year. The problem is that the more crops of rice they take off that land, the less nutrition there is in the food that the kids are eating. And so nutritional deprivation, although there may be food in their tummies, they're not getting what they need to have healthy lives. And those are the things that we know we can change. Canada has helped to leverage additional support for countries looking to scale up through the development of partnerships such as the Zinc Alliance for Child Health. The Zinc Alliance is an innovative public-private partnership between Canada, the Micronutrient Initiative, and Tech Resources, a Canadian company, designed to scale up the delivery of zinc programs. Together, we are starting a new project in Senegal that is designed to substantially reduce child mortality. This leads me to the final issue to which I would like to speak, and really the topic of your conference, public-private partnerships. After all, as I said earlier, agriculture is business. The challenges in the agriculture sector are complex, and they require both the public and the private sector to improve the entire value chain, as I said earlier, from the field to the table. We know that foreign aid alone is not enough to promote long-term and sustainable development. Globally, companies are finding more and more opportunities in developing countries. Private flows, including foreign direct investment, portfolio equity investment and remittances to many developing countries are now far greater than foreign aid. This shift is welcome and it's to be encouraged. Given the interconnectedness of the global economy, the private sector will be key to the achievement of future development results. Currently, CETA collaborates with a broad range of actors, including developing country governments, the not-for-profit sector, multilateral institutions and the private sector to deliver sustainable development results. Some of the agency's work has involved the private sector, but more can be done, and more is being done. At the fourth high-level forum on aid effectiveness in Busan, Canada endorsed a joint public-private statement to bring the private sector into the fold. It represented a commitment to an open dialogue between development actors for better results, along with the principles of collaboration and the aid effectiveness agenda. On March 5th in Toronto, Minister Oda hosted a roundtable with Canadian private sector representatives to discuss how they could help CETA reduce poverty and accelerate the achievement of development results. The roundtable pointed towards four factors. First, the role CETA can play in facilitating developmental partnerships that also foster business investment and growth in developing countries. Second, the importance of networking with private sector actors both in Canada and in the countries where CETA works. Third, the need for CETA to improve operational nimbleness. Now, sometimes I think we want to change that word for flexibility, and I thought about that when I was doing this speech, but you know, the word nimbleness is so important because people who are in business are making decisions on a daily basis. And so the nimbleness of CETA needs to be there in order to work in cooperation with, with CETA. Decision-making speed needs to be there if it wishes to partner effectively with the private sector. And fourth, the need to consider new tools, new mechanisms and partnership arrangements that could help create opportunities for shared value between CETA and the private sector. We know that we can achieve our development goals and help businesses grow. CETA wants to encourage steady flows of private investment that can bring capital, knowledge and new technology to farmers and their communities. That's why Canada is contributing to the global agricultural and security, sorry, the global agricultural and food security program private sector window to innovate financing methods for smallholder farmers and small and medium-sized firms in the agribusiness sector. We get all of these acronyms 
the GAFSP. So if you keep that in mind, the Global Agricultural and Food Security Program. That private sector window provides loans, equity, guarantees, and technical assistance to private firms in developing countries in order to help smallholder farmers increase productivity and reach new markets. Just two weeks ago, the first successful applicant for this program was announced. The PRAN Group of Bangladesh will receive financing from the GAFSP to expand its food processing and fruit pulping operations. In addition to creating over 1,200 new jobs, this project will positively impact the livelihood of several thousand farmers and their communities by ensuring consistent demand and fair pricing for their produce. This is the first of many high-impact successful proposals to be approved through the GAFSP private sector window, I'm sure. We need more partnerships like these, and we will be looking at your findings and ideas from this conference to inform our approach to private sector collaboration going forward. We know that the private sector's strengths include knowledge and expertise, innovation, and the financial and human resources it can bring to the table. CETA's strengths include its knowledge of developing countries, its experience in helping with regulatory and market framework reform, and its experience in measuring and managing towards results. As the Minister likes to say, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. To be effective, we need to collaborate and we need to focus our efforts on measurable results. Seven billion people. It's a lot of mouths to feed. And every year, even though fertility is declining, there are about 80 million more of us on this planet. The challenges are daunting. Commodity price fluctuations, climate change, land degradation, gaps in infrastructure, but they will not deter us from taking an innovative and manageable approach to finding lasting solutions to global hunger. We are operating in a very complex environment, but CETA is evolving and continues to be strengthened by its 43-year history. On behalf of CETA and Minister Oda, I look forward to drawing on your findings from this conference to push forward a new agenda on collaboration between public and private sectors in agriculture that benefit everyone, from farmers right through to consumers. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lois. Now, one thing not all of our uh, friends in the room will know, the non-Canadians may not know, uh, when Parliament sits in Canada, which is most of the time, every day the government responds to opposition comments and questions, usually at 2 o'clock, and potentially every portfolio of the government is on the front lines of that exchange. And today the parliamentary secretary is potentially on the front lines for international development. So she needs to leave us uh, now after this terrific speech. Um, but I'd like to ask one or two of those in the room briefly uh, to, to come forward while others help themselves to lunch so that Jean can introduce them and Marco to uh, Lois. And they are uh, Ruben Echeverria, if he's here with us, Pamela Anderson, Bob Ziegler, and Jonathan Wadsworth. Now, um, it remains for me, uh, Lois, to thank you. It was a terrific speech. It means a great deal to us all that you came and joined us today, and it gives us an opportunity to celebrate the partnership between CEDA and IDRC, as well as the very impressive work of CEDA on agriculture and many related areas throughout the developing world. Thank you very much.